Ren, how are you? Good, good. How are you, Mike? I'm it's very Mike, well. Is it? Yes, it is. Excellent. Cool. It's very good. How are you doing over in Australia there? Yeah, pretty good. The weather's nice. I'm having a good time with some family as well and uh, relatives. So, yeah, it's pretty good. Excellent. Uh, all right, so let's start with uh, Force of Execution, obviously. For those people who haven't seen the film yet, tell us a little bit about your, your character and your role in the movie. Uh, my role is I'm uh, the number one hitman for uh, Alexander Coates, which is Stephen Seagal. My character's name is uh, Roman Hurst. And um, my journey through the film, I, uh, I get sent to do a hit, and um, I kind of get set up and uh, led to kill the wrong person. And after that, I get punished, and my, uh, my hands get uh, taken from me. Wow. Uh, taken from me as in broken. Right. Um, and then I kind of make my way back, and... Uh, um, the character finds himself again, and um, he, with a little help from Oso, who's uh, Danny Trejo's character, mm -hmm. and um, he manages to fight his way back and um, help his original boss, uh, Alexander Coates, uh, overcome the uh, the bad guy, which is Ving Rhames. Very cool. Now, you've been studying martial arts for, for years, um, but here you get to put them on display for the whole world to see. So what's different about kind of the, the studying of martial arts versus, you know, capturing that sort of dynamic on film? Oh, wow. Um, well, I, I've got to say, um, I mean, I ha this this film, we kind of, um, a lot of it was actually full contact. The the, the stunt guys, were some, they were some really big boys, like mm -hmm. uh, probably around the 250-pound plus mark. So they padded them up uh -huh. with some really hard plastic armadillos around the body, front and back. So I was able, and arm pads and stuff, so I was able to go really, like, full out. So a lot of the body punches and the body kicks and all that kind of stuff, they're full impact. So... I mean, studying the martial arts is great, and you study for, um, you know, self-defense, for competitions, um, for ring fights, but rarely in film, when that translates over, do you actually get to make that full-on contact. But the, the difference about force of execution, um, particularly to the body shots, we were really going for it. Mm. And, um, you know, as I said, the guys, they were big guys, and they were padded up, and, uh, you know, I was really letting loose, and uh, I think that really worked. So... In terms of the difference, that's something, I mean, you study martial arts and when you spar with your partners, you get right into it, but then when it comes to film fighting, it's generally quite different. But I think the gap here was actually closed a little bit because there was a lot of full contact involved, which is rare, rare on film. Right, right. So you're surrounded by these big action stars, Steven Seagal, uh, Danny Trejo, Ving Rhames, in, in, you know, the last movie you were with Steve Austin, you know, and, and you're sort of the, the newer kid on the block. What's that, what's that dynamic like on set? That's pretty cool. I mean, it's. I mean, I, I was a kid when these guys were, um, uh, like, like they were already stars. And I used to, you know, sit at home and watch them in, in film, and uh, I've always had a passion for film since I was a kid. And then seeing these guys, and then, you know, now um, becoming a man myself and getting the opportunity to work with them, it's, um, it's, it's inspiring. It's great. It's you know, a year, a year. there's not a moment that doesn't pass by when I think, wow, I used to, you know. Right. I was a kid and watch you guys, and right. now here I am working alongside you. So it's uh, it's um, it's great, you know. It's a wonderful feeling having that. Very cool. So, so you, Steven Seagal, Danny Trejo, Ving Rhames, who is the toughest guy on set? <laughs> <laughs> am I allowed to say me? Of course you are. <laughs> uh, uh, look, they're all tough guys. They're all lovely guys. You know, great. But um, you know, I'm the. You, you, I, I got age on my side. So right, I right. Push myself to the front of the queue. That sounds good. <laughs> that sounds good. I, I like that answer. Um, uh, so uh, a few years back, you, you know, you put in a fairly lengthy stint on on Days of Our Lives, which is you know yeah. pretty far away, about as far away from action movies as you can get. Generally speaking, what yeah. was that kind of transition like to soap operas from soap operas? You know. Um, I mean, you know, to be honest with you, I really liked my time on Days of Our Lives. Mm -hmm. I, I, um, I quite enjoyed it. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm a classically trained actor as well as the martial arts, so it never really kind of, um, you know, it was part of my job. I enjoyed it. It, it is a far stretch from the action mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, everything's very, uh, I mean, you just on most of the time on, on the on the soap, yeah, they're opposite one other person, and um, it's just it's all in the dialogue and in, in the human behaviour. But with the action movies, you've got so much physicality in there, and there's just you know guns and explosions, and just the physical aspect of it that is um, night and day from the soap. They're just totally different in that aspect. Right, but, right. Um, um, yeah, but yeah, to be honest with you, I, you know, didn't mind those well lines. I actually quite enjoyed it. But um, I think the, the film is where my heart lies. Sure. And, um, I'm just having a ball at the moment, mate. Good.
Good. So you got your start acting in Australia. Um, yep. And, uh, you know, obviously you did a lot of stuff there before moving, you know, over to American filmmaking. Is yep. there a difference between Australian filmmaking and American filmmaking? <laughs> uh, yeah, there kind of is. Um, we don't have the, I mean, Australia, the, the industry is very kind of small. And that's why once um, a career starts moving in Australia, everyone generally moves over to the States to kind of take things to the next level. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm doing two films out here at the moment. There's very, um, it's I, I, everything. It's it's kind of different in the way where it doesn't matter who you are, if you're um, you know a, a name or whatever. Everyone, crew and that alike, everyone's kind of on the same. There's no hierarchy. There's no thing. Everyone just seems to be on the same level, which is I kind of it's kind of very Australian, mm -hmm. you know. So mm -hmm. crew will sit down with actors at the same table and chat, and everyone's just on on the you know, on the level, whereas um, I find in the States, everyone kind of, actors are over here, and, you know, people only ride with these people, but it's just, right. it, I think it's just a more laid-back attitude that the Australians have, and um, I think the um, the American machine is kind of more efficient, and it just more pumps out um, really quickly, and it's really business-orientated, where the Australian film industry is kind of a little bit laid-back, and it's, um, we don't have the studios here, and most of the films are uh, government-funded, mm -hmm. and um, so it's directors getting to make the films they want to make and the stories they want to talk, want to be told as opposed to in America they make films that get seen all over the world and uh, um, and make money. So right. I think um, that's kind of the main difference. Uh, you know, the American film market is just such a machine and it's, um, you know, you, you, everyone all over the world sees the films where the Australian market, it's more the directors make their films that they want to make because it's government funded and uh, they rarely get seen out of Australia. Right, right. Well, oh, very cool. Um, so, uh, what what are you working on next? What can fans see you in next? What can we expect from you? Uh, I, at the moment, right now, I'm shooting a film called Infinite, mm -hmm. which is a sci-fi thriller at the moment. Cool. And it's uh, it's an ensemble piece. It's got um, Luke Hemsworth, nice. uh, Luke Ford, um, Daniel McPherson, myself, and, and, and some other Australian actors. Um, I'm from here. I, fit, I wrap on this film on Tuesday, mm -hmm. and then on Wednesday, I start another film called Terminus. Wow. Um, I'm the bad guy in Terminus, cool. uh, I'm playing a NSA agent, Julius Stipe. And um, that film is kind of No Country for Old Men cross John Travolta's phenomenon. So it's a drama, but there's a small sci fi element to it. Hmm. So, um, yeah, but I think these two films are going to be quite interesting because they're not they're um, they're breaking the mold for Australian films. They're right. they're catered for and um, they're targeted for the international audi audience. They're not just a film, um, which is you know the, the way I was explaining just before. Most of the time, and the Australian films are just made for Australia. Where where these films, there hopefully these two films will revolutionise the Australian film industry because they're they're made for the international market. Right. And that's what the uh, the producers are targeting. Right, right. So they're my two two new things that I'm in at the moment and, and uh, they should be out next year sometime. Excellent. All right, so final question. What's one thing you would like the world to know about you that they might not already know? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, one thing. Um, I, I have no idea, mate. You've, you've stumped <laughs> me. What would I like the world to know about me? That, um, I usually I usually manage to stump people with this question, which isn't my intent. I just like, you know, I figure, once sometimes people are like, oh, I'm, I'm an excellent ballet dancer or something, you know, so. Oh, wow, well, that's, uh, yeah, um, no, that's great, great question. Um, oh, mate, I don't know. That's all I right. I really don't know. Yeah. <laughs> to be continued for the next time. <laughs> I'll think about it. All right, that sounds interview. good. All right, well, Bren, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me, and uh, continued success to you. Great. Thank you, Mike. Nice yes. talking to you. You too. Take care.